Lapras. How are you? Hey, buddy. Hey guys, welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red episode 35. I believe in the last episode, we caught Articuno, the last of the three legendary birds. And in this episode, I thought I would do something uh, to kind of tie up some loose ends, if you will. Some things that we could do, some Pokemon that we could only get through in-game trades. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy over here, uh, just to the left of Fuchsia City. I'm looking for the Pokemon Golduck. Want to trade one for my Lickitung? Now, if you're playing Leaf Green, he will ask instead for a Slowbro. Luckily for us, we did catch a Golduck, so we will go ahead and Golduck will be sent to Hayden. Hayden, thanks for the Pokemon, man. This is the only way that you can get this Pokemon in this game, in this current game, is by trading your Golduck to this NPC, and we will get the Pokemon Lickitung. Which is pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. I always like doing in-game trades uh, just to get those Pokemon, um, you know, a little bit differently. Hayden sent over Mark. Mark the Lickitung. Take good care of Mark. Okay. So, hey, thanks. Isn't my old Lickitung great? I don't know. Let's check it out. So, uh, first, let's actually look at Lickitung. Now, Lickitung is a strange Pokemon. It's pretty much a poor man Snorlax. And by a poor man Snorlax, I mean like they haven't eaten in years type of poor man because Lickitung is very bad. Now in the first generation of games, it did have access to the move Swords Dance, which it still does, which did raise that attack a pretty significant amount and made Lickitung able to use Hyper Beam and actually demolish in competitive battling. However, it just never was quite as good as other Pokemon. Now, if you did want the Lickitung, uh, I believe this one that we get in this trade will always come with own tempo, which I would say is the better of the two abilities. Obviously, Infatuation is less frequent, uh, and a lot of things carry a Confusion type ability, but those stats just don't help it. That typing doesn't really help it. I don't recommend Lickitung. It's a weird Pokemon. Now, this particular Licker... 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 This Licker... This Lickitung is a relaxed nature, it will always be a relaxed nature, and it won't have any items uh, equipped to it when you get it, which is unfortunate, uh, and it will come with the ability Own Tempo, Prevent Confusion, and it knows the moves Knock Off, Stop, Wrap, and Disable. Not terrible, uh, but not that good either, uh, and it will come at whatever level you traded. But that's not all, we're not done yet. There is another Pokemon that I mentioned, uh, oh geez, maybe 30 episodes ago roughly? Um, that was over in Cerulean. Now, we could have gotten this Pokemon well before, but now is a good time to go and actually get it. And so, we're gonna head to Cerulean. Cerulean City, uh, the home of Misty. And we will go into this house right here that we could have done oh so long ago. Uh, you know what? Is it this one? Would you please trade with him? Right, it is this one. It is this guy right here. Hello there, do you happen to have a Poliwhirl? Would you agree to a trade one for my Jinx? So unfortunately, we don't have a Poliwhirl right now. Uh, we have a Poliwag, but we will have a Poliwhirl very soon. So I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna cut ahead until we actually have a Poliwhirl. All right, so we're back. We have a Poliwhirl now in our party. Uh, I went and leveled uh, him up a little bit, so I gave him the experience share. Make sure that if you give him an item, you take it back. Um, <laughs> Uh, and there we go. So now we will talk to him. Hello there. Do you happen to have a Poliwhirl? Would you agree to trade one for my Jinx? So, uh, yes. But first, let's take a look at both Poliwhirl and Jinx. Jinx is an interesting Pokemon. Being an Ice Psychic type Pokemon and with those stats of 115 special attack and a base speed of 95, this makes it a actual pretty decent special sweeper. That type coverage is going to cover almost every Pokemon. I mean, Ice and Psychic is super offensive. That's what they are built to do, is to take down other Pokemon. Uh, it doesn't have the best of ability. It does have Oblivious, but I wouldn't highly recommend it based off of its ability. It's those stats and those typings that make it an offensive powerhouse. Now, in later generations, it actually does get some moves that are a little bit better. Uh, but in this generation, if you don't have an Ice type, you don't have a Psychic type, I would recommend Jinx. It's one of the few Ice types that are, are in this game, so it's going to have a Stab Psychic Attack and a Stab Ice Beam. That's pretty darn powerful. All right, goodbye, Poliwhirl. Boom, 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 boom. Poliwhirl will be sent to Dante. I wonder if he knows 
that uh, he's not going to receive a Poliwhirl. I mean, he's going to receive a Poliwhirl, but... And here we go! Jinx! One of the only times that you can actually get Jinx... I mean, this is the only time that you can get Jinx in the game. Pretty cool, actually. And we get Zinx. Not Jinx, Zinx. I don't understand it. I don't ask questions. I don't care. We'll get... We'll get Jinx. Thanks! You're welcome! That Jinx I traded you, has it grown stronger? Uh, no. It hasn't. Uh, he won't mention anything about his Pokemon evolving when you got it. Uh, so we have Zinx. Let's go ahead and look at it. It does have male. It is mild nature, which is great. And obviously Ice Psychic. Uh, oblivious, so it prevents attraction. And it also has the abilities Ice Punch, Double Slap, uh, Powder Snow, and Lovely Kiss. There you go, there you go. You now have Zinx in your Pokedex. We also have Mail, uh, which if we read, that's a healthy Jinx. Be kind to it. Okay, and we will go ahead and take that Mail. Uh, so, yeah, we'll send that to the PC. Uh, I don't know why it has that, but it does. All right, so that was kind of a short video. I actually want to see... I actually want to see if we can do something else real quick. Hang on one second. So, something that I thought of is this episode's going to be super short. So, let's actually just fly to where we need to go, uh, where we will be tackling in the next episode. So, because of the length of this video, I actually figured that this is a good time to go over a bunch of the Pokemon bios that we haven't gone over before. So, this is going to be the fully evolved Pokemon that are not found in the wild in this game, and in fact, aren't found at all without trading or just pure leveling or using some type of evolutionary stone. The first Pokemon that we're going to look at is is the evolution of Doduo, which is number 85 in the Pokedex, Dodrio. As I said with Doduo, uh, it's base 100 speed and 110 attack make it, I think, better than Firo. Uh, it doesn't have the bulk like Pidgeot does, and it doesn't quite have the bulk that Firo does, but I do think that it's just a better Pokemon. Its abilities, Early Bird and Run Away, I would obviously choose Early Bird. Run Away isn't really going to help in any uh, actual circumstance, really, for the most part. You're not going to be running away from trainer battles or anything like that. Uh, and I do recommend this as a normal flying type Pokemon. It's actually my favorite in the entire first generation uh, of flying types. So if you're looking, still looking for a normal flying type, go ahead and evolve a Doduo. The next Pokemon we're going to look at is one of the fossils. It, this is Kabutops. So if we leveled Kabuto from level 5 to level 40, we will get Kabutops, a water rock Pokemon with the ability Swift Swim or Battle Armor. Now, Swift Swim, Swim can be wonderful if you have Rain Dance on your team, and its stats are okay. It's got a pretty solid defense, a monstrous attack of 115, and a workable, I suppose, 80 base speed. That's going to help a lot in the base game. I, you're going to be able to, like, focus your EVs on speed and you'll be able to outspeed most of the things in the game. It does hit really hard but it also has a lot of weaknesses. Grass is a four times weakness. It's going to hurt this thing big time. Now let's look at its uh, its compatriot here if you get the Helix Fossil and you level up an Obanite from level 5 to level 40 you get Omastar which has the same ability Swift Swim or Shell Armor. I would recommend Shell Armor if you don't have a Rain Dancer. Its, its stats are a little bit different. It again has a really high defense of 125, a very low speed but a special attack of 115. Now an interesting thing about uh, Omastar, it obviously keeps that water rock typing. It's actually interesting because it's one of the only fossil Pokemon that actually has a reason in the anime and whatnot for its extinction, which is that it was too slow, it couldn't eat. It was too heavy, and there, its shell was too heavy, that the tentacles weren't strong enough to actually make it move and get food, so it died. The next Pokemon we're going to look at is probably one of the most powerful in the first generation of games, and that is Dragonite. It evolves from Dragonair at level 55. It has the ability Enter Focus, which prevents flinching. Not the best ability, but that's fine. It does pick up a typing of Flying, making it a quad weakness to Ice. So an Ice Beam by anything that has a boosted special attack is really, really going to hurt this thing. If we look at its stats, though, that 134 attack is absolutely monstrous. It's not as fast, which is very interesting, considering that its Pokedex entry is it can fly in spite of its big and bulky physique. It circles the globe in just 16 hours. If we were to use that on Earth, that means that it flies the speed of sound, but yet it has a speed of 80. 
Uh, it is a wonderful Pokemon. If you have a Dratini on your team, you probably, the earliest you could have got one is in Celadon City in the game corner. Uh, and you are very close to a Dragonite of your own if you don't already have one. Next is one of my favorite Pokemon in the entirety of Generation 1, or ever. It's Gengar, a ghost poison type. It is the evolved form of Haunter that you get from trading, and it has the ability Levitate. Ground type attacks don't work on Gengar, meaning that it has three immunities. Normal, Fighting, and Ground. It is immune to three of its things, and one of those is an actual weakness. So it does have some interesting um, weaknesses, that's, that's for sure. And it is super frail. Its defenses are almost non-existent. A 60 defense and a 75 special defense and a 60 HP means that this thing is not going to take a hit. However, with a base 130 special attack and a speed of 110, you will be able to outspeed and probably destroy most things that you're going to be facing with a Gengar. I absolutely love it. Um, I wouldn't totally recommend it for this generation because it's not going to have access to any stab special attacks, but once it does get those in future generations, it becomes a wonderful Pokemon, and its move pool is huge. Huge. The next Pokemon that we're going to look at is a Pokemon that we've kind of talked about before. This is Vileplume. It evolves from Gloom with a Leaf Stone, uh, and it has the ability Chlorophyll, which works really well if you have Sunny Day on your team. Now, you can't encounter this Pokemon at all in the game. It's a Grass Poison type, and those stats make it pretty tanky, surprisingly, for a Grass Poison type. It's very, very slow, though, so if you can give it Sunny Day, I would recommend it. That 100, that 100 uh, special attack is pretty good. Now, if we look at its, uh, its compadre, Obviously, Vileplume is only available in uh, Fire Red from Evolving a Gloom, but Victory Bell is available for you Leaf Green users, and its stats are actually a little bit different. It's got 105 attack and 100 special attack, making Victory Bell an actually very good uh, mixed attacker. Unfortunately, that's not really going to work super well. Uh, poison attacks aren't that great in this game, and its Grass-type abilities, it will be able to capitalize on that special attack. It's a little bit slow, but especially if you have Sunny Day, this thing's going to have a monstrous speed of 140 so in the right circumstances victory bell is a force to be reckoned with uh, in the single player of this game and competitively actually if you can set up a sunny day all right moving on to our uh, continuation of the pokemon that we can get from trading this is machamp Machamp is a fighting type. We've gone over Machop and Machoke. It has the ability Guts. When Machamp is inflicted with a status condition, its attack is raised by 50%. That's wonderful. If you can predict a Thunder Wave coming in or anything like that, you can swap into it and be relatively safe. Uh, your attack stat is going to go through the roof, and you have reasonable bulk. Uh, your speed is really low, though, but honestly, Machamp is going to be able to survive most things. Uh, any flying type attack is probably not going to be able to cut through its defenses. That attack of 130 is pretty monstrous, so it'll be able to send out a rock slide, for instance, and be able to demolish any flying type that you're actually fighting. Uh, it is a wonderful Pokemon, and it gets better with future generations. In fact, uh, Machamp actually has a place on my team for a future Let's Play that I'm actually doing. So, there you go. Future Let's Play announced right now. And, uh, finally, we have Golem. Golem is the, uh, evolution of Graveler by trading. It has the abilities Rockhead or Sturdy. I personally would recommend Rockhead. One-hit KO abilities, uh, aren't very common, nor do they have high accuracy. It is- it changes its species to a Megaton Pokemon. It is enclosed in a hard shell that is as rugged as slabs of rock. It sheds skin once a year to grow larger, which makes me wonder how big the biggest Golem is. Now, it does have a, uh, it doesn't have an encounter rate at all. That's my bad. I did not mean to put that there. Just consider, uh, that it's not, not applicable. There is no encounter rate of Golem. I accidentally left Gravelers there is my mistake. But those stats are, uh, Golem stats. It is a rock ground type, meaning that it is super weak to water and grass. Uh, but it does have a monstrous defense stat of 130 and a really high attack of 110. It's its speed that hurts it and its special defense that are really going to hurt it, but if you can swap into a physical attack, I think Golem will do some wonderful things on your team if you have the ability to trade. Now, there are very limited amounts of bios left in this game, um, which is going to make production a lot faster from my end, so from here on out, uh, things are going to be flying by. We're going to be doing stuff really fast. Now, here in Viridian, you may have remembered that there was a gym that was locked. We couldn't get into it. Well, it's open now. And in the next episode, we will tackle the Viridian City Gym Leader, who, by the way, is... Unknown? Question mark. Frieza's been here.